It's a diamond cutter. And I've, I've uh, uh, talked about this a little before that it was coming. I'm excited to uh, bring it to you. And uh, it's polishing your business to profit. And just by looking at the cover, what can we say about this graphic here? It's already there, yeah. Okay. And what else can we say? We need to release it. Less is more. It's in there. We got to release it, right? That's what this exercise is about. So you've worked to grow your business, and it has grown. The top line is far higher than it used to be. The bottom line, however, well, that's another story. It's not high enough and hasn't grown much. How many people have been there, right? Okay, a lot of money coming in, a lot of money going out, not much is staying. And besides that, there's some problems. Some departments are shaky. There are a lot of new team members who are inconsistent and the whole business isn't reliable yet. This is normal when building a business. You grow it, then you fix it, then you smooth it out, then you optimize it, and then it breaks again and you start the whole process all over again. Often, net profit lags sales growth. This is because you've been so busy working on growth and just keeping up with the growth you created that you haven't optimized it yet. Take heart though. Imagine a 10% or 12% or more profit on this volume. If you hadn't built it up to this level of top line sales, you wouldn't have the opportunity to carve 10% from it. And you may be closer than you think. Many contractors before you have found themselves with 5 million, 10 million, or even 20 million in sales with little net profit to show for it. They spent all their revenue on operating their business. They didn't spend all the money on purpose. It's just how it happened without a focus on optimizing the business. Some became diamond cutters and figured it out. A diamond cutter takes a rough stone and by working diligently to take pieces away and polishing creates something of even greater value. That's what you need to do. Take unnecessary expenses away and polish. Smooth the rough parts, make it simple and elegant. So we have a chart here and sales growth rate is the purple line, okay? So let's say here's your years, you're growing by, could be any number of values here, but here you're growing 7%, 5%, seven, okay? Now here your growth rates are less, you know, 1%, 2%, so forth. But look at your net margin, right? Your net margin could actually go up a lot in years where you don't really grow a lot, right? So we're really making a lot of progress. Let's say we had, uh, we sold 5 million this year and we sold 5 million the next year. Do you think we could make prog? So we haven't made progress on the top line, but you think we'd make progress on the bottom line? Yeah, okay, and is that real progress, right? Yeah, that's what we're saying is that the net margin isn't necessarily associated with top line growth. Right? In fact, if anything, <laughs> there might be a negative correlation. In years that we grow 30%, we're like, could be a little bit of chaos here, and we're reinvesting a uh, disproportionate amount of money into the business, buying new trucks and training new people and stuff, and maybe our margin goes down in those years that we grow a lot. And then years that we go sideways, wow, now we're, are, are, uh, we're reaping a much higher uh, net profit. A diamond cutter finds ways to run the business on 90% of the revenue, leaving 10% left over as a profit. So now we're just going to use 10% for discussion purposes in this exercise, but you might be shooting for even more. As we've discussed, 10% profit for a large business is very good. Small businesses may do better once they level out. And in some parts of the country, it's a bit easier or harder depending on cost and what service you're offering. Okay. So like, what is a good net profit? For me and the size of business that I have and I'm not involved in my business, you know, if we got, uh, you know, 11%, I would be really happy, okay? Uh, some years it could be less, some years, you know, it could be a little bit more. Uh, I might have years when, wow, you know, my service is out of favor and I'm 
you know, the, the revenue declined and I want to live to fight another day and, you know, I have my fixed cost to pay and I might be a couple years in a row with, you know, 6% and really frustrated, right? And doing everything I can to, to work it, but then, you know, business comes back and I have. So uh, I, I, I know other uh, contractors who a high number might be 18%. Payroll is your number one cost, right? If you had all your employees together, it's a number one expense. And typically when we see the higher margins like that, they're in areas where you don't have to pay people as much. Okay, so that's just been my observation. Okay, but we're gonna use 10% for discussion purposes here, okay? So in the, in the School of Entrepreneurship exercise, staying above the line, we talked about adjusting our fixed expenses down as sales go down so that we might make a profit in all seasons. We don't wanna make money when we're busy and give it back with losses when we're slow. How many people have done that? Okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we don't wanna give money back. So it looks like this and the chart in staying above the line exercise. So here is our sales. So we see sales, okay, our business, our service is in favor, it's out of favor. It's in favor, it's out of favor, for whatever reason, right? And here is our break-even, this line across the middle. And this is what our break-even started out as. Now, as we grew, we added fixed cost, okay, so our break-even became higher, but then we were able to reduce fixed cost and bring our break even down as sales went down and we're still making a profit and it's not as big of a profit as it was when it was busy but we're still making a profit we're not giving m money away had we not adjusted our break even and reduced fixed cost then we would have lost this much money see so staying above the line means the, the, the line is break even and what we mean is if we bend the line it's easier to stay above it we can bend it so in the SOE exercise defensive coordinator, we talked about getting others, in particular your accounting department, to help you trim unnecessary expenses and save money wherever you can without compromising your marketing and sales effectiveness. So this is part of the diamond cutter's job. Take the unwanted bits away. So let me uh, just make sure you got this metaphor here. So literally there are uh, obviously, there are diamond cutters in the world, people who, you know, create diamonds, right? They, they cut diamonds, okay? And a lot of them are in New York City. There's a diamond district, and there's literally, you know, could be the 17th floor of this building. There's guys there that are diamond cutters that have these goggles, you know, uh, on, and they take a rough stone, okay? They take a rough stone. There's a wheel, okay? And they'll just touch the diamond to the wheel and they take bits away. And as they take bits away, they're making it more valuable. Because when it came out of the ground, it was a rough stone, you see? So by taking bits away, you're making it more valuable. That's the metaphor. See? So that's what we have to do in our business, right? If you have a $10 million business of making zero, and it's happened <laughs> a lot of times, then you're just spending too much in the operation of your business. You have to figure out how to uh, optimize your business so that you can deliver what it is that you deliver to your customers and only spend 90% of your revenue in doing it. And if you can do that, you got 10% left, okay? So we're taking bits away is one strategy and another strategy is to optimize their performance. We're getting more results with the same effort, okay? Or the same result with less expense. Okay, so there's two ways we can do that. So that's the diamond cutter metaphor. So in the SOE exercise, guarding against fraud, we talked about a vigilance for and defending against all forms of theft even if others don't consider it theft, that may be costing your company money, okay? So that's labor, right, hours, it's time, it's materials, it's leads, it's sales, and it's equipment, tools, okay? 
all kinds of theft that goes on. And we know that it's a lot more, as we went through this exercise, a lot more common than we like to think. Okay, how many people have had somebody defraud them or steal from them? Okay, yeah. And it can go on systematically, it can go on in a big way, it can go on without you knowing it. Okay, 